Sorry to bother you as always. I'll be counting on you again this time. Mia, sporting a cheeky smile as she said this, seemed to feel no guilt for making us foot the bill. She took for granted that she could join our trips and use Rick like a personal ATM, leading me to sigh for what must have been the umpteenth time. Oh, by the way, this time Mia's parents are also coming along. Thrown off by this unexpected change of plans, I was caught off guard. Of course, Mia had no intention of paying for her parents' travel expenses. Rick, trying to maintain his generosity in front of Mia, wouldn't dare to ask her to chip in. I knew for a fact that he would come back to me later, asking me to pay half. Despite the surprise, I was secretly pleased with the unexpected turn of events. I glance at the excited Rick and chuckle under my breath. Yes, that's fine. It'll be the last time anyway. Last time? I nodded, giving a broad smile. The two of them looked surprised for a moment, but soon burst out laughing. Right, sure, they chuckled thinking my words were just a joke and not taking them seriously. They resumed their friendly chat. Seeing the two of them so carried away, I didn't even respond. In my bag, I gently caressed a certain tool, eagerly awaiting the moment of my revenge. My name is Mary. I'm turning 63 this year. We used to love traveling. From an early age, we would arrange our work schedules a few times a year to enjoy domestic trips. This didn't change after we had children or even after retirement, I thought we would continue to enjoy our hobby in this way. Everything changed when Mia, the wife of our eldest son, started visiting our house. After our eldest son, Max, got married, Mia started visiting our home quite often. Even busy with work, Max seemed to feel relieved knowing that Mia was visiting her in-law's house. So, I didn't say anything. We were happy to have Mia who was young enough to be our own daughter, coming to visit us out of affection. However, what began to bother me was the attitude of my husband, Rick, towards Mia. Thank you so much for always treating me to dinner. It's okay. It's worth cooking when you visit. Right. She only has cooking as a hobby. That's why she's really happy when Mia visits. When Rick talked with Mia, he often started to belittle me. He constantly compared me with Mia, who is young enough to be my daughter. Mia has beautiful skin, or you should learn from Mia's sense of beauty. He would take any opportunity to praise Mia and put me down. Sure, Mia always came to our house with a beautiful hairstyle and dressed up. However, it's troubling for both Mia and me to be compared with someone who has a generation gap as big as a parent and child. I tried to correct Rick, who kept on talking excitedly, alcohol included. Could you stop it? You're making Mia uncomfortable, aren't you? What's wrong with saying the truth? Are you jealous of a beautiful girl? Of course not, what are you saying? Then don't complain. Sorry, Mia. My wife isn't as young as you, so she gets irritated easily. With a smug smile, Rick shrugged it off, and I sighed in frustration. Perhaps because we didn't have a daughter, Rick was overjoyed when a cute woman like Mia became our son's wife. But recently, Rick's behavior seems to have gone too far. Not only does he belittle me, but he's constantly doting on Mia, visibly enthralled by her. I thought it was some kind of joke, but I haven't forgotten the careless words that an emboldened Rick let slip. You are always so kind to me. I appreciate it. Yeah? Well, I bet I'm a better man than Max. Hey, what are you saying? Max has always been coward. Unlike him, I could protect Mia. Rick was implying to Mia that he was a better man than Max. The thought of him saying such things to Mia, my daughter-in-law, made me feel repulsed. I hear you too often go on trips. I heard it from Max. Yes, it's been a hobby of ours for a long time. I envy you. Max has been so busy with work, we haven't gone on a trip in forever. Mia kept a bright smile on her face and turned her gaze toward Rick. I felt a chill at her expression, anticipating Rick's next words. Really? How about joining us on our next trip? Are you sure? I feel a little bad. Rick brightened his expression and said this to Mia while grinning. He didn't seem to care about my opinion at all. Mia, too, showed no sign of holding back, even as she said she felt bad. She glanced at me, cupping her cheeks with both hands. 
but I don't have any money to spend freely. Don't worry, we invited you, so we'll cover it. Right? Oh, um, yes, I guess. When Rick looked to me for agreement, Mia took Rick's hand with a triumphant smile, expressing her gratitude. Perhaps it was my imagination, but Mia was indeed smiling at me with a narrowed, contented gaze. We're planning to head out at the beginning of next month, so be ready. Yes. Got it, thank you. In the end, the two of them were getting excited without even considering me. All I could do was watch with a cold gaze. So what are we going to do? We haven't reserved a hotel room for Mia. Well, we'll have to do it now, won't we? Please take care of it. Why should I have to do it, when you were the one who happily invited her? Why are you being so cold, knowing Mia is coming? After Mia left, when I informed Rick that we had only made reservations for two, he said something absurd. Despite his pompous demand of be kind to Mia, Rick didn't lift a finger to make the hotel reservations or even secure the theater tickets we had planned on. What's more, he even hesitated to cover the costs, despite his grand boasts. Yet, despite his attitude, he made the creepy joke of if need be, Mia can sleep in my room, which left me at my wit's end. This discomfort, naturally, continued during the trip. Even during the trip, Rick never stopped trying to appease Mia. After Mia expressed disinterest in the theater, I ended up wasting the tickets I had prepared and had to change our plans. It was quite frustrating. I was frustrated with Rick, who, without reproaching Mia, wooed her while being lovey-dovey. Listen, Mia. We appreciate you coming with us, but it's a problem if you mess up our travel schedule. Oops. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Your husband is so kind, I just got spoiled. That's fine. I'm happy when you rely on me. No matter how much I conveyed, Mia would wink at Rick, and a peculiar pattern where Rick would rebuke me in turn was established. Mia, clearly understanding that Rick was on her side, was often seen making manipulative comments. And whatever I said, Rick would only brazenly retort, what's wrong with pampering my daughter? I'm sorry, I'm always the one having fun. Really, I must be a nuisance, right? Not at all. I'm really enjoying having Mia with us. My wife is the one who is more of a nuisance, always complaining. Do you really mean that? Once Mia tasted the good life, she started coming to our house just in time for our trips and naturally started accompanying us. Perhaps Rick had been inviting Mia in advance, knowing that he was going to travel. I was not informed about any of this. Despite that, the extra travel expenses due to Mia were mostly left to me. During the trip, Mia always left the payments to Rick, never even attempting to open her wallet. In fact, she didn't even bring a wallet. This is so cute. I want it as a souvenir. That's okay, I'll pay for it. Let's go buy it. Really? Thank you. The additional expenses for Mia kept increasing because Rick, wanting to please her, would readily jump in to pay. And always afterwards, Rick would concoct some strange reasoning like, I'm just responding to Mia's requests, and resist even more when handing over the money to me. The trip, which was supposed to be enjoyable, became nothing but additional expenses, nothing went as planned, and I grew increasingly disgusted. Such trips continued time and again, causing my irritation to intensify. Since talking to the two of them did not solve anything, I decided to complain directly to Max about Mia. However, the response that came back from Max was beyond my expectations and was extremely harsh. Hey Max, Mia has been tagging along on our trips forever. Can't something be done about this? I said. Well, I've heard that Dad is happily inviting Mia on these trips, you know? Max replied. The problem is that they decide everything on their own. And they won't pay a dime. Oh? Wait a minute. Isn't that strange? I've heard that Mia actually pays for her own expenses, right? From what I could tell, Max seemed to have been fed a distorted story by Mia. He seemed to completely believe the tale that Mia was paying for her own expenses because my husband Rick was insistently inviting her on these trips. Of course, I hadn't received a single penny from Mia, and given Rick's personality, I doubted he had either. 
And yet, Max seemed to think I was making up this story to spite Mia. That's absurd. If that's what you think, she doesn't have to come anymore. Mia is trying to get along with you guys, you know. You don't have to talk like that, right? Why should I get along with someone who fabricates lies and makes others out to be the bad guys? I tried to explain the truth to Max, but I didn't have any concrete proof that Mia wasn't paying for the trips. Max seemed to be in a dilemma over whom to trust, me or Mia. Later, Max apparently talked to Mia again, who stuck to her story that she was paying her fair share. In fact, she complained to Max that it was unfair for me to claim she wasn't paying when she was, and that she felt unliked. Overwhelmed by her tearful appeal, Max sighed over the phone, seemingly taking Mia's side. At Max's doubt, I was at my wit's end. Mia never takes out her wallet when she comes on these trips. She always says she has no disposable income because she's not working. But she's been telling me that she's paying, Max defended. In that case, isn't she traveling on your earnings? If she really is paying, calculate exactly how much she's put in. In the face of such hostile circumstances, I found myself snapping at Max. I had reached my limit with Mia, who was making me look bad with her petty behavior, and Rick, who was consistently falling for it. In order to obtain evidence to convince Max, I decided to take revenge on the two. Then, on the next trip, Mia came along as always. Her small branded bag seemed to hold little more than a handkerchief and her smartphone, with no signs of a wallet, of course. Sorry for always being a bother. I appreciate your help this time too. As she said this with a smirk, she seemed to feel neither guilt nor anything else about making others pay for her. As usual, Mia climbed into the passenger seat of Rick's car and flashed him a friendly smile. Rick responded to Mia's behavior with a lax face. Seeing the two of them, I sighed again. I might have usually tolerated it all. But not this time. Coughing slightly in the back seat, I glared at the two I was planning to push into hell. About today's trip plan, how about this place? I've always wanted to visit there. Oh, great. I'll take you everywhere you want to go, Mia. I'm so happy. Thank you. Despite not bringing a single penny herself, Mia seemed fully prepared in terms of where she wanted to go and started proposing ideas in front of me, completely ignoring the previously agreed plan. With her smartphone, she kept telling Rick, I want this. I want to go here. Like always, I didn't pay much attention and instead, checked the preparations for my revenge. Suddenly, Rick turned to look at me as if he had just remembered something and blurted out the most outrageous thing. Oh right, Mia's parents are joining us this time too. Excuse me? I told my parents about our trips and they got jealous. I thought I'd invite Mia's parents this time since it's a special occasion. Of course, I'm going to cover all the costs so Mia doesn't need to worry about anything. He informed Mia with a grin and gave me a sidelong glance. Caught off guard by the sudden change in plans, I was speechless. Regarding Mia's parents' expenses, of course, she probably has no intention of paying, and Rick is just pretending to be generous in front of Mia right now. He probably has no real intention of paying either. He'd most likely tell me to pay half once we got back home. Surprised and annoyed by this unexpected development, I had to suppress a chuckle. Really? That's convenient. Upon hearing my response, Rick looked at me with a sly smile. Right? Right? He was in such a good mood that he even started humming as he resumed driving. Perhaps he misunderstood that he could now curry favor with Mia's parents with his wife's approval. Or he may have thought that since I said it was convenient, I'd generously foot the bill. I glance at the excited Rick and chuckle under my breath. Thank you so much. No problem. This is the last time, anyway. Huh? The last time? With a broad smile, I responded to her. Both of them looked at me in surprise for a moment but then began laughing, you're joking, right? They seemed to think I was kidding and didn't take me seriously. Mia is like our own daughter, of course, we'll keep going on trips together, right? Of course. So please keep taking care of me. Ignoring the overconfident duo, I maintained my smile without saying a word. Even the unexpected events that Rick hadn't informed me about were bearable, 
thinking that the two of them were about to experience hell. When we arrived at the hotel in the evening, we met up with Mia's parents and were all led to our rooms. As usual, Mia and Rick both announced that they were going to rest in the room. Of course, these two were in separate rooms, but I knew exactly what they were up to when they said this. So, I intentionally said to them. I think I'll have a drink with Mia's parents, since it's a special occasion. Sure, take your time. Creating a situation where they could be alone, they cheerfully said take your time, and Mia even waved at me with a grin. The way they seemed more at ease without me around confirmed my suspicions. Anticipating that they would let their guard down, I approached Mia's parents. There's something I'd like you to see, is that okay? As they looked at me quizzically, I quietly launched an app on my smartphone and began to play a video. Wow! What a nice room! Your room is nice too! Really? Then you can come to this room too, right? The video I started to show them was streaming from a camera I had set up in the room earlier. This was the room where Rick and I were staying, and Mia had just walked in as if it was the most natural thing in the world. Mia's parents watched with puzzled faces as they took in the sight of their daughter and Rick, who were quite familiar with each other. It's like I'm preparing the hotel and the trip for Mia. Heck, we could even go on a trip just the two of us, without my wife. That would be too pitiful for your wife. But she is really mad that I'm not paying. Don't worry about it, Mia. I'll give her a piece of my mind." The screen was continuously displaying the exchange between a fawning Mia and a pleased Rick. The interaction between the two, unthinkable for a father-in-law and daughter-in-law, was heating up. They seemed to be having fun at my expense. As Alice, Mia's mother, saw her own daughter comfortably hurling outrageous insults at me, she turned pale and looked at me. What on earth? What is my daughter doing? This footage is being streamed from a camera we left in my and my husband's room. It seems your daughter is currently talking to my husband in our room. I thought this trip was because Mia wanted to express her gratitude to us. Oh, really? I was only informed today that both of you were coming. Seems she decided on her own again. I revealed everything about the trip and other things to the two of them, without hiding anything. The fact that Mia wasn't contributing financially at all, Rick's attitude, and the fact that the two were neglecting me. As I explained, the two confessed as if through the camera. Because of this, the complexion of the two who had been watching next to me changed hectically, turning red and pale. Throughout this, I was quietly recording while watching the various words of Rick, who was smirking, and his words to his daughter-in-law that didn't seem like lines. My daughter has done something terrible. I truly don't know how to apologize. I appreciate your understanding. I intend to sever ties with these two after this. Looking at the two who were downcast and speechless, I thought it would be cruel to torment them anymore, and when the time was right, I headed for the room. I forcefully opened the door of the two's room, thinking that it was about time to reveal the truth. Whoa, Mary! What the heck, all of a sudden? What? Is there something inconvenient about me returning to my own room? I didn't say that. Don't just barge in, you'll scare us. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were jumpy because you had something to hide. As I said that, I replayed the footage from earlier in front of the two. Seeing their parents' faces behind me, the two became flustered, and I sighed at their ridiculousness. Did you want to come on a trip by yourselves? Were Mia's parents and I in the way? Well, that's… Mia, I heard from your parents that if you invite them on a trip to express gratitude, you should at least pay for it yourself. No, that's not it. That's not it. It's because he said he would give me money. Mia, who was desperately trying to defend herself, kept making excuses, and Rick, who was blustering about the camera I had prepared in secret. Seeing the two who couldn't even apologize at this point, I felt my heart growing colder. Is what she's saying true? Max! The person who appeared at the perfect timing was Max, who had been away on a business trip. Mia was surprised by the unexpected guest, and her face turned pale as she gasped. Of course, I had called Max ahead of time for this occasion. Noticing the discrepancy between the amount in the household account and the travel expenses, Max, who had finally felt something was off, was no longer likely to side with Mia. Mia, were you lying? 
It's not like that. It's because your dad said I didn't have to pay. I just took advantage of that, please believe me. Oh, really? You've been making me pay because you said you were short of money because of Mia. I operated my smartphone and replayed another video at full volume. It was a pathetic conversation where Rick was reluctant to pay for the trip. Because I feel sorry for Mia, I'll cover her expenses, and you also wanted to go on this trip, so you should pay for it, echoed Rick's nonsensical remarks throughout the room. This guy, he's so broke that he has to make me pay. What? He's the worst. I was trying to be a good daughter-in-law because I thought he had money. At Rick's lowly remarks emanating from the smartphone, Mia's true nature finally emerged. The person who sternly condemned Mia, who was wide-eyed and trying to insult Rick, was Mia's mother, Alice, who had been listening quietly in the background. Who's the real lowlife here? I'm so embarrassed as a parent. Alice, with a red face, severely reprimanded Mia. So much so that neither Max nor I had a chance to intervene. You are no longer my daughter. I shouldn't have believed that you were offering this trip as a gift. I didn't mean it like that, this is so unfair. As Mia's voice echoed through the room, I instinctively reprimanded Alice. Seeing this, Rick quietly came over to me and finally offered an apology, saying, sorry for trying to look good in front of my son's wife. However, I was fed up with Rick's attitude, which seemed to imply that he expected forgiveness because he had apologized. When we came here, I said it would be the last time. I don't need a husband who fawns over his son's wife anymore. What? Why? I'm apologizing, aren't I? Do you think an apology will suffice? You're such a disappointment. With that, I expressed my desire for a divorce. It was then that Rick finally realized the irreversible mistake he had made. He knelt down on the spot and drooped. After the disastrous trip, Max also apologized when he learned the truth. The cost of Mia's trip, which I had covered, would be repaid by Mia, who seemed to have been affected by her parents' admonishment. Mia decided to work part-time, without any help from Max. In addition to the trip, I heard that the branded bags and accessories that Rick had been fervently gifting were confiscated. Rick has been going around telling people, I ended up divorcing because I was being milked by Mia. It seems like he's causing more trouble in that regard as well. I heard that he even went to Mia's place demanding her to repay the money he had spent on her. It caused quite a commotion. Was dad always like this? I only remember him and mom getting along well. I wonder. In retrospect, he seems to have just been a lazy man with whom I shared a common interest in travel. Max was disappointed in Rick, who lacked any sense of authority as a father. He vented his frustrations to me about Rick's behavior. However, from my perspective, the story only reinforced that it was a good thing we had divorced. Because Rick had spoiled Mia so much, he had almost no money left. I successfully divorced him and now live comfortably by myself, having kicked him out. Now, I'm planning a trip to wherever I want to go, undisturbed and making up for all the times I had been made to endure in the past.